Welcome to the ship room. You're on the air. The word carnival comes from a term that means a party that looks pretty awesome, but I never get invited to. The term also has an alternate meaning, and to learn more about that, I'm joined by Greg, Greg Sullivan, the CIO of the Carnival Corporation. Greg, thanks Brad. for being here. What a great place to work. The company's almost 50 years old. You've been acquiring cruise lines like crazy. You have 10 unique brands, more than 100 ships, 700 ports. It's massive. How do you deliver that cohesive environment that all of these different individuals can work on and collaborate and deliver that incredible customer experience? Of the nine brands we operate under, eight were acquired. So we acquired all that. So you got a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we do have everything. Yeah. We literally have everything. We collaborate by inbox right now. And if you can remember back that far <laughs> and how frustrating that was. One of the most amazing things about Carnival Corporation that I've come to learn, we have an incredibly talented group of people, but they've operated in isolation. 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 I need a platform where I can bring them together. That's why we're excited about Teams. Having all of the content associated with the conversation in teams. conveniently organized in the same place, not in the inbox, not scrambling around trying to find it. It's just, it's part of the conversation. Yeah. It's part of the collaboration. I'm in the process of planning my next cruise with our family. And so I have some questions about the do's and the don'ts of cruise, like the etiquette. If I ask oh. you some questions, will you help me out and make sure I don't make a fool of myself? Say someone wants to come on board with a, let's say a therapy raccoon. Is that allowed? No, the raccoon is not. The therapist would be advisable <laughs> in your situation. <laughs> Are there any buffets that will turn you away if you show up in a bathrobe? On, on certain brands. <laughs> exactly, luxury, luxury brands are going to exactly. go from the spa right to the buffet. But... Is there some kind of point-based good behavior system that I can redeem in order to get a turn steering the ship? Uh, no, but see me and I'll see what I can oh, work man. out for. Got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, man. I love these connections. So companies all over the world are making decisions based upon the upcoming end of support of Windows 7. It's, it's you know, driving huge you know, change across the industry. Some of that pain about this process is causing businesses to start thinking um, in a creative way. What plans have you made as you're navigating these, these end of support uh, milestones? So we're there. We, we have a lot of Windows 7 in our uh, mm -hmm. enterprise. And uh, we're working hard to modernize. We're not just making the leap, we're looking at what those devices are actually being used for and trying to be very thoughtful about it. So it's really, it's really uh, a great opportunity for us to reconsider how we approach the, the jobs that we do. So there's opportunities for us in this, uh, in this modernization. It's a lot of work and it doesn't necessarily mean we want to do all the work right now, but. going to take the opportunity to to refresh not only those platforms but our approach. We were talking about you know just the scale of the transformation that you're doing. What advice would you give other of your peers about moving to the cloud and Office Microsoft 365? We made the decision to commit to Microsoft Office 365 but we had to do some of the foundational work first. What you, happened? you may never have seen this before. This is the, uh, the oh. Teams phone. Who's on the Teams phone today? Hi, Brad. Hi, Greg. Welcome aboard. Aboard what? Oh, sorry. That's, that's just an occupational habit. <laughs> My name is Sally Montgomery, and I am a freelance activities director for cruise companies. All right. Do you have a question? Well, it's less of a question and more of a once-in-a-lifetime idea. So right now, themed cruises are huge. You've got Oprah cruises, Star Trek cruises, cruises for people who love knitting. I mean, the possibilities are endless. So Greg, I've been developing a few ideas for some themed cruises that I'd like to pitch your way. And tell me if you think that Carnival would be interested. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'll give us a couple of your ideas. Okay, first there's the feline float. Right before you leave port, 300 cats are released onto the ship, and then after several days in the Caribbean, you can take one home at the end. I'm gonna go no on, on that one. <laughs> no. Two words, Renaissance cruise. 
passengers can do oil paintings, there's a turkey leg buffet, crossbows, and no one is expected to shower. Woo! Uh, <laughs> the painting part I'm good with. Yeah. The showering part not good with. The IT crews where IT pros from all over the world get together and party in the tropics. And as an added bonus, you'll have at least a thousand different perspectives on how to get Wi-Fi on the boat to work better. Yeah, we should do that one. No, 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 we should have, uh, we should have a scrum on that ship <laughs> and see how much code they can really generate. There you have, go. Have a little competition, what yeah. do you say? Feel free to take any and all of these ideas back to corporate. And if you are in need of an activities director, I know someone who's available. One last question. You work in an industry that is constantly judged on how it is innovating and responding to customer needs. How do you make IT a driver and not just a supporting player in that innovation? In our circumstances unique because I have these floating cities that I have to basically provide a cloud to. Yeah. But the other interesting opportunity that arises from that is I have a massive amount of compute in my enterprise oh, yep. mm -hmm. because I have to put it on the ships. Yeah. And it's not always busy. So what's my opportunity to utilize that compute? We're constantly, you know, modernizing, renewing, refreshing. Those ships come in and out of port. There's a ton of activity that occurs on those ships from mm -hmm. a technology perspective when they come in. So I was uh, at an actual carnival recently, and I noticed that the rides just had some great names. So I'm gonna give you a list of some sci-fi channel movies and some list of some roller coaster names, and you're gonna tell me, is it a ride or is it a movie? Okay, okay here we go. Dinaconda. Dinaconda, I'm gonna say movie. The Cornball Express. Well, I really hope that that's a ride. <laughs> it, is, it is a ride. Yeah, okay. Rage of the Yeti. Movie. Thunder Dolphin. That's a ride. Bermuda Tentacles. Ooh, I'm gonna say movie. Sharktopus versus Werewolf. Well, that has to be a movie. Yeah, you're right. Sasquatch Mountain. That has to be a ride. We talked about technology for a minute and, and, and the, the, the consumers. Tell me about what you've got on your wrist there. This is what we call a medallion. So this is the new technology we're bringing to our ships. There's apps that go with it. So if you're sitting mm -hmm. on a pool chair and you want to order a pina colada, you can just order it. And if you move, it, it knows you've moved. And so we have these sensors all over the ships. We, we, we wire these ships. We put 75 or so miles of cables on these ships. It's amazing how much technology now plays into the, into the experience and makes it better, makes it more fun, makes it more seamless and frictionless. It's optional. You don't have to take it. You can still take the old cruise card, but our opt-out rate on a typical sailing of, you know, two, three plus thousand guests is normally less than 10 and usually less than five. Okay, now one of the things we have here in the ship room is while, we, while we've been talking, we have our own chat bot that's been listening to the conversation and it's come up with the 12 questions that are most representative of what we've spoken about. So mm -hmm. since your, your organization spends so much time out on the seas, my assumption is you know, you, you're an expert at tying knots. I was a highly decorated Boy Scout. How high do you have to go in your company before people start calling you Admiral? We don't have that. How well can you use a sextant? Me personally? Yeah. No. Yeah. From the IT standpoint, how do you feel about the Kraken? The who? Given you what you're interested in, is talk like a pirate day popular? Yeah. No, 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 look like a pirate. Yeah, we need to get you a parrot. How many cruises do you take a year and do those count as work days? I try to take at least one a year for, uh, for fun. And, and then seven for research? Do you have a contingency plan if you run into mermaids? You mean as a corporate policy or yeah. me personally? How many years are, are we away from cruise ships in space? 57. Can a door floating in the North Atlantic actually support two people? I, I think you can. How many times do you have to be written up by HR before they make you walk the plank? Once. Hey, th this has been so great, Greg. Um, if people want to know, learn more about you, about your IT organization, about Carnival, um, where, where, should they, where should they go? All of our brands uh, have websites, and I'm on LinkedIn. Hit you up on LinkedIn. Love it. This is uh, Brad and Greg for The Ship Room. We'll see you on the next episode. No one is expected to shower. It has to be fun, right? What is, um, what is the show about? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>